everyone. I am Shani Bose, and I am absolutely thrilled to be a part of ISP 2023. Over the course of this program, I have been engaged in the project Extremely Helophilic Archaea in Space Biotechnology, identifying potential bioproducts and mapping experimental knowledge gaps under the expert guidance of my mentor, Andre Antunj. Today, I have excited to share my insights on the topic of exploring helophilic archaea's dual role in astrobiology and health nutrition in this presentation. So let us first discuss about what are helophilic archaea. Helophilic archaea are the organisms included in the archaea domain that thrive in environments with high salt concentration. They have evolved specialized adaptations to survive and thrive in extreme conditions. They play a significant role in health and nutrition by contributing to food preservation, providing potential probiotics, and enabling salt reduction strategies, promoting both food safety and healthier dietary options. Now let us move on to the differences between extremophiles and halophiles. Extremophiles are a broad category of microorganisms, plants, or animals that have adapted to thrive in extreme con environmental conditions that are typically considered hostile to most life forms. These conditions can include extreme temperatures, acidity, alkalinity, pressure, or salinity. Extremophiles are remarkable for their ability to endure and even flourish in such harsh settings. Halophiles, on the other hand, are a specific subset of extremophiles. They are known for their adaptations to high salt environments, such as salt flats, salt mines, and hypersaline lakes. These organisms have evolved mechanisms and produce molecules to tolerate and often require high salt concentrations for their metabolic processes. While extremophiles include a wide range of extreme conditions, halophiles are particularly uh, specialized in dealing with high salinity and are a fascinating group for biotechnology, bioprocessing, and astrobiological research to the, uh, for, for their unique adaptations. Presented here, is the phylogenetic tree of life illustrating the diverse branches, uh, including the three primary domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. In the scope of our project, our exclusive focus have been on the halobacteria class within the archaea domain. Now let's go on to the bit more specific part, the halobacteria class. This is the class that consists of extremely halophilic archaea. It is divided into three orders, the halobacterials, the haloferracids, and non-natrial whales consisting of more than 48 genera and 216 species. In recent years, studies on systematics have intensified and identified many new genera and species. The first phase of my project included looking at the wide variety of applications of the extremely halophilic archaea. I had coordinated with my teammates to look through scientific literature and find out general applications of this group of bacteria. I've utilized search engines such as Google application, uh, Google Scholar for uh, this project and journal repositories like PubMed, ResearchGate, Mendeley, Springer, and reputable websites like LPSN, Backtype, and NCBI to gather information about the Helobacteria class, including its diverse families and species. These are a few of the several applications that we have uh, uncovered in this context during our research. Now, Extremely halophilic archaea are highly relevant to the astrobiological research due to their unique adaptations and the potential to inform our understanding of extraterrestrial life. As water resources on Mars and icy moons are expected to contain brine, it is worth noting that halobacteria are well suited for such environments on Earth. Consequently, they emerge as strong candidates to be included in space research endeavors. These organisms are considered model for uh, astrobiology. Their ability to survive in extreme conditions, including high salinity, desiccation, radiation, and low nutrient availability, makes them very good for studying the limits of life and exploring the potential for life in harsh environments. The study of halophilic archaea can provide valuable insights into how microorganisms adapt and survive in extreme environments. This can be done by understanding the mechanisms that allow them to withstand high salinity and other extreme conditions. Scientists can better understand the potential for life in similar environments elsewhere in the universe. Helophilic archaea have demonstrated their astrobiological potential due to their ability to survive in stimulated Martian conditions. They have shown resistance to radiation, desiccation, sub-zero temperatures, and percolate exposure, which are conditions that could exist on Mars and other extraterrestrial bodies. 
Studying the survival strategies of these microorganisms can shed light on the possibility of life in such environments. Hilophilic archaea produce various biomolecules and pigments that have potential applications in astrobiology. These biomolecules, such as osmoprotectants, can contribute to the survival of organisms in extreme environments. The pigments produced by halophilic archaea, such as carotenoids, have been studied for their potential use in remote sensing and as biomarkers for detecting the life on other planets. The halophilic archaea have been studied for their biotechnological potentials, including their ability to produce enzymes with unique properties that can be applied in various industries. These microorganisms have the potential to be used in drug delivery, wastewater treatment, biodegradable, sorry, biodegradable plastic production, and other applications that could benefit future space missions and colonization efforts. After the vast research for general applications, they were divided into three groups and I was allocated the health and nutrition field. My uh, responsibility was to conduct a literature-based search to identify all the applications in this field and determine which species have been experimentally validated for potential use in astrobiological research. After a thorough analysis of quite a few research papers, I have distilled the primary potential applications of extremely halophilic archaea in the health and nutrition domain. I have designated them with unique symbols as illustrated in the following slides. In the upcoming slides, you'll find a curated selection of species that have been subjects of experimentation up to this point. But it is important to note that numerous other species within this domain hold significant purpose and are actively under research as of now. The present slide introduces the halobacterial order having families like Haloarcuraceae, Halobacteriaceae, Halococcaceae, Haladaptaceae, and Natronoarchaeaceae. This table shows the Halobacteriaceae and Haloarculaceae family. Notably, Helobacterium salinarum strain NRC1 showcased here exhibits remarkable versatility across a range of applications. This subsequent slide highlights the Halococcaceae, Haladaptaceae, and Natronoarchaceae families. Though their uh, documented contributions to the health and nutrition field remain uh, relatively limited, uh, it is worth noting that they do have some uh, notable applications in this field. Moving forward, this table compiles uh, species from the Haloferracaceae family, with Haloferrax volcani and Haloferrax mediterranei emerging as standout competitors, boosting a higher number of documented applications in this context. The following table features species from the Halorubraceae family, notably uh, identified by the prominent black four-pointed star, signifying their association with the human gut microbiota. This observation proves the prevalence of the human gut-related species within this classification. Lastly, we go into the family Natrialvesi with Haloterogena turkmenia emerging as a prominent representative. This species have, uh, has garnered significant uh, attention in research, substantiating its potential within the realm of health and nutrition. This following section commences with the of table drawn from prior research, which features species that have undergone experimentation and proven their viability in astrobiological endeavors. This table shows organisms capable of thriving in the rigorous condition of Mars, microgravity, and other space-related parameters. Particularly noteworthy here is the Halobacterium salinarum strain NRC1, which has garnered the most attention and holds significant promise for future space expeditions. The green crosses in the table represent successful growth. The yellow crosses signify their survival, and the red crosses indicate instances where they did not withstand the test, as uh, exemplified by Halobacterium salinarum strain NCCB330035, among others. We now turn our focus to the Haloferracals and Atrial based families. Although these families have not been extensively researched, several species within them have demonstrated the capacity to thrive and survive in outer space-like conditions. In the following section, we revisit the previously presented tables, now adorned with marks indicating species that have proven their ability in withstanding and thriving in these challenging extraterrestrial conditions. Among the emerge as particularly viable asset to space researchers. 
within the Halophorax family, Halophorax volcani and Halophorax mediterranei, shine with noteworthy number of uh, documented applications and successful adaptation to Martian conditions. While the species of Halorubraceae and uh, Nactialbaceae families have not yet uh, an extensive document track record, ongoing future research is uh, poised to reveal more about their potential contributions to astrobiological research. Working with extremely halophilic archaea presents several exciting prospects in various fields of research and applications. It is worth noting that research in this field continues to evolve and as our understanding of these microorganisms deepens, new opportunities and applications are likely to emerge. The current data set is not exhaustive, necessitating additional research on species holding promise for biotechnological applications. Future investigations should incorporate laboratory-based experiments, potentially exploring the organisms to space-like conditions. Uh, the bioactive the bioactive profiles from the tables produced uh, from the tables produced previously we can conclude that the species Halogeometricum borundiens and Haloteragina cacmenia can be taken into consideration for investigating its relevance in future space researches given they have a wide variety of applications. Additionally, advances in biotechnology and genetic engineering techniques will uh, play a significant role in harnessing the potential of extremely halophilic archaea for various purposes. Now I'll move on to the acknowledgement section. I would like to express my gratitude to the Blue Marble Space Institute of Science for their support, guidance, and resources, which were instrumental in the success of this research project. I'm also highly indebted to my research mentor, Andre Antunj, whose expertise, mentorship, and unwavering encouragement propelled uh, me to achieve my research goals and broaden my horizons. This project has also been a testament to the power of teamwork and mentorship, and I'm absolutely honored to have had the opportunity to work with such an exceptional group of individuals. I'm profoundly thankful to my dedicated teammates whose collaboration and commitment enriched this endeavor. Thank you so much, Gabriela and Emma, for making this journey of discovery both rewarding and enlightening. Uh, here I share collection of the literature that informed on this topic. With this, I will continue my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Wonderful. Great job, Shayani. I see Ellen Cook has already raised her hand to ask a question of you. Go ahead, Ellen. Yes, this was a great talk. Um, thank you so much for going over all of your amazing findings. Um, so I did see that you were saying there are some, so some of these species have um, multiple different applications and there you drew a link to the applications and potentially being able to survive in extreme environments. Were you able to find any sort of reasoning behind that? Like why these um, organisms that have these multiple um, applications are able to survive or that why there is a link between like their applications and um, their survivability or availability of survival? Uh, a few of the findings that I got are they produce some enzymes like uh, photolyze or some uh, DNA uh, repairing enzymes. So my guess is uh, the researchers are not very prominent as of now. So the very few researches that I found are these uh, enzymes are helping them survive the uh, Martian conditions as of now. So, yeah. Graham, you're muted. <laughs> uh, thanks, Sanjoy. Uh, we have time for one more question really quick, Sanjoy. Okay, thank you. Um, Sayani, first of all, great presentation. I really enjoyed it, very clear. Um, when you mention salt, do you mean specifically sodium chloride, NaCl salt, or do your conclusion also apply to other types of salt, like magnesium sulfate salts? Uh, the species that I was talking about are mainly uh, sourced from the salt lakes and salt dunes. So my guess is I am not very informed about what other salts are present in those regions. So as of now, I think it's just NACL. I'm not very informed on the other research papers though. Uh, 